Our next speaker is a colleague of mine from polypeptide. Mm -hmm. So um, her name is Eljoar Rakai. And um, uh, she is at the uh, polypeptide Belgium facility. However, she's French. <laughs> and uh, her PhD is in organic chemistry at the uh, Pierre and Marie Curie University. And she spent most of her uh, time developing processes in manufacturing small molecules and peptides. And uh, in her current role, she finds pragmatic approaches to make peptides in very large quantities, as well as keeping in mind that we are a green company. It's my pleasure to introduce El Juarikai. Thank you, Robert, for your very kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning for those that I do not see. So, uh, sorry, just to, I just need to, do you have any? Oh, yeah, okay. All right, thank you, thank you, yeah, it's just to, oh, perfect, thank you. So today it will be, I mean, my pleasure um, to share, I mean, with you the current available chemical strategies to support the extension of the half-life of therapeutic peptide. The preceding outstanding presentation of David uh, has also uh, already, I mean, covered some, uh, uh, some areas, so I will be, I mean, very glad to complete, I mean, some of them. No. Okay. Ah, in back. Yeah, okay. So it's going back. Okay. Thank you. So to start with, um, uh, some few words about the limitation of the therapeutic peptide, which offer a nice challenge to the custom manufacturer, but also, I mean, a new dimension to consider in the peptide synthesis. So through this presentation, I would like, I mean, to highlight the chemical strategies uh, available to extend the half-life, uh, allowing to have evolving structural complexity of peptide. The most challenging peptide will be synthesized by selected chemical transformation, but also, I mean, by a combination of those transformations. So the therapeutic peptide have been uh, proven to be very efficient uh, in treating the critical disease, as I mean the peptide display a high target affinity and selectivity. They uh, have a low toxicity. Simple peptides are quite easy to synthesize, and they are capable of crossing the cell membrane to deliver a treatment straight into the cells. However, the peptides have a very short half-life in the body, and mainly due to the enzyme degradation. When the peptide is small, uh, they are uh, filtered out of the body by the kidneys in a very short time, uh, 2 to 30 minutes. If we look, I mean, to some very well-known peptides like the insulin, uh, insulin has a half-life of 4 to 6 minutes when it reaches the bloodstream. Oxytocin has a half-life of 10 to 15 minutes when intravenously administered. And ma many other peptides have a very short half-life when they are orally administered. As you can see, I mean, on the graph here, so the linaclotide, the plecanetide, somatostatin, octreotide, oxytocin, carbetocin, and vasopressin, which have, I mean, a very short half-life when they are orally administered. So moreover, the peptides have a poor physical chemical properties and pharmacokinetics profile. So therefore, for the treatment, uh, they will have a very short time to reach the part of the body. And to compensate, we will need a high dosing of those peptides, which could, I mean, impact the daily life of the patient and, of course, increase the cost uh, of the treatment. Hopefully, various peptide drug degradation system have been extensively investigated. So we have the orally intravenous uh, administration, um, which uh, could, I mean, uh, help uh, in order to perform those uh, um, uh, administration of peptide. Thanks to the chemical modification, the absorption enhancer, the carrier system, which will be, in fact, the key leverage to extend the half-life of the peptide. So the biggest challenge for the peptide therapeutic during the clinical application will be the fast degradation. 
almost all the peptide drug formulation available on the market or uh, around the free uh, administration, intravenous, subcutaneous, and oral with a high dosing and frequent interval. So the best way in order to increase the half-life of the therapeutic peptide will be artificially to increase the overall size. So either by attaching them to a molecule, as already uh, seen in the preceding presentation, or to manipulate the amino acid chain. And hopefully, by applying those technologies, we are capable of drastically ensure uh, an increase of the half-life of peptide by a factor between 2 and, and 100. So let's dive into the heart of the subject by sharing uh, the different chemical strategies. So what chemical complex modification of the peptide will, of course, lead to a prolonged plasma half-life, uh, and a correlation can be established. More structural complexity is introduced into the peptide, more the stability of the peptide is highlighted by our customer, which will lead to, of course, new challenge for the peptide manufacturer, as it will mean complexity of process and complexity in the API and purity profile. Another, I mean, complexity will be the supply of the raw material in order, I mean, to generate those peptides. So let's start, I mean, by the first class that we already, I mean, have seen this morning, which was, I mean, pioneer class of complex peptide, the Delphi bridge rich peptide. So um, their presence in the nature has fostered the um, companies, the pharma company and the biotech company to move from the exploration to the exploitation of those peptides. And it was principally driven by the therapeutic potential of the venom peptide as a new drug peptide, Selected, I mean, peptide uh, as the conotoxin and conopeptide are found in the venom of con snail, spider, scorpion snake, and sea anemone. And those peptides are very, I mean, stable. So the we have a structural stability and the target specificity, and that's the reason why over the three past decades, uh, their, I mean, attention has increased, and their complexity has increased as well. We have an increase of the peptide land from initially 7 to 45 now amino acid, and we have also the increase of the disulfide bridge uh, from 1 to up to 4 uh, peptide. So the very well-known peptide that has been, I mean, on the market for some of them more than 20 years is the eptifibatide with the brand name of eptifib uh, integridine, which is, I mean, extracted from the snake. We have the riconotide, which is a 25 mer peptide with a free disulfide bridge extracted from con snail. And we have, I mean, the linaclotide with a free disulfide bridge, a 14 mer peptide, which is also inspired from the venom. Then we can see, I mean, over time, that the, uh, uh, the, the structure has evolved by complexity. So if we look, I mean, to a one specific class of family, which uh, has an impact in the reduce, I mean, of the pain, we can see, I mean, some structure going from 22 mer peptide to 36 mer peptide with a specific disulfide um, uh, connectivity, which will be for the free disulfide bridge, a 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, and for a 4, like the chlorotoxin, it will be 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 7, and 6, 8. So knowing that those disulfide bridge uh, peptides are very stable, uh, some biotech uh, has, I mean, explored those to even use, I mean, the disulfide bridge, but increase, I mean, the complexity of the peptide by adding additional moieties that will facilitate either the transportation or the stability of the peptide. And this is the case of the peginezatide, uh, which is a disulfide bridge uh, peptide with a two identical chain and uh, which contain, I mean, the PEG moiety, which will ensure a better stability. So unfortunately, as mentioned uh, this morning, this peptide has been withdrawn, I mean, from the market in 2012. Then we have another one, a similar one, which is a pixetacoplan. That one has been FDA approved in 2021, and you can see the correlation from the structure. It's also, I mean, a uh, two uh, peptide chain, identical one with a one disulfide bridge, and also a PEG 40 kilodalton to stabilize, I mean, the peptide and ensure the, um, the target specificity. Other structure that has been also presented this morning, the bicycle peptide, where we can see an increase of the complexity 
uh, from a chemistry point of view, uh, but they are, I mean, exhibiting a greater conformational rigidity and therefore a better metabolic stability. Other type will be the click chemistry, where we have also the greater conformation rigidity, which will be, I mean, generated uh, from analzide, uh, azide, and analcine that will be, I mean, coupled together in order to get, I mean, this uh, fine membrane ring and stabilize, I mean, the structure. So what is now, I mean, the current chemical modification library that we have on hand in order uh, to stabilize the, the, the half-life, I mean, of the peptide. So first of all, before to design, I mean, a peptide with the optimal half-life, we will take several factors into account. So the first one will be the sequence, the modification that we would like, I mean, to introduce, the administration route, the amount, I mean, of the peptide, so the daily dose that we would like, I mean, to uh, get. What has been very well established is the sequence variant of a peptide have a different half-life, and when we uh, introduce chemical modification, we can alter positively the half-life, and that will be, I mean, the key leverage to do it. The most uh, important chemical modification will be the cyclization peptide, peptide with the containing the amino acid, non-natural amino acid, pegylation, polymer, and carbohydrate coupling, albumination, NC terminal modification, and dendrimer, which work, I mean, very nicely as well. So if we look to some examples showing effect of modification on the half-life of peptide analog, so there is a very nice article, the Nature newspaper, where you can see how the half-life increase factor can be obtained by a simple chemical modifi modification. So if we take, I mean, the first example, we have a cyclization which is performed with the same structure, head to tail, and for which we will have an increased factor of 48, which is quite uh, uh, impressive. Then by adding, by changing on that current amine structure to classical amino acid by a D-amino acid substitution, we are able to increase the half-life by a factor around four. And then C-terminal modification by acetylation or acetylation and amidification could also I mean, increase a factor two to three. And non-natural amino acid, like the substitution of the histidine by the ornithine, we get a factor of 2.3. So a nice amine state uh, of, of being able to have this uh, half-life increase factor. With, I mean, the most important one, which will be, I mean, the cyclization. Cyclization, as already I mean defined this morning, the reason why that the cyclic peptide are much more stable is simply that the ring formation limit the flexibility of the peptide chain, which will allow to stabilize their conformation. And we have a covalent bond which are formed from various positions of a peptide. The most well known is a single, double, triple disulfide bridge, which are created from the cysteine. But we can have also the click chemistry generated from analcine and an azide. We have also, I mean, the example of the lactam uh, that are created uh, between, I mean, the amine function and the carboxylic function. We can have also a thioether, which is generally uh, obtained through a nucleophile substitution. And we also have, I mean, the bicycle. So I would like, I mean, to share with you uh, one case study of a free disulfide bridge uh, that has been, I mean, conducted at a scale of three, one kilo with the main challenge for developing such type of disulfide bridge peptide from a manufacturing point of view. So there are, I mean, two key challenges. The first one will be the synthetic challenge and the analytical challenge. The synthetic challenge will be, of course, the selective formation of the multiple regio selective disulfide bridge then the control of the monocyclization over the polymerization. We need to reach a very high API purity to control the impurity profile and to have, from a manufacturing point of view, an efficient cleaning of the equipment as a byproduct. Uh, could, I mean, generate some polymers, could generate some uh, um, uh, sticky, I mean, product into, I mean, the, the, the reactor and therefore we usually dedicate some mobile equipment for the following steps in order to ensure the absence of cross-contamination with other product. <laughs> then we need to look to the performance in matter of yield, productivity, the cost of good. Uh, we need to maintain a high productivity despite the diluted condition to ensure the right cyclization. 
From the analytical challenge, it will be to demonstrate the cor correct folding position and the impurity profile characterization when the peptide length is long. So in order to start that work at a one kilo scale, we have taken into account the different customer requirements. So the first one was the, the competitive cost. We need to make some cost target. We need to be able to uh, supply at expected price for the customer and of course to demonstrate the selection of the best process to produce. Then the second point axis was the control strategy, to have a very robust control strategy, meeting constantly, I mean, the specification, and for that we need to define the right control strategy, the right specification, understand the different critical impurity that can be, I mean, generated, make the purity and impurity specification. The robust process to demonstrate the robustness and therefore to have a very nice understanding of the design space and the security of supply. We need to get, I mean, the product on time and for that we need to ensure the security of supply of the uh, raw materials. So in that case, we have investigated a route selection involving four strategy exploration in order to define the best manufacturing process with a control strategy and of course the request cost of good that has been uh, 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 shared by our customer. So we started by the two first route, which were, I mean, a random route where we started with a six cysteine protected with the same protecting group. So in the first case, it was with a tritil. The second case was, was with the esterbity group. So starting from the resin, we have performed the assembly by the solid phase peptide synthesis using the uh, associated smog protecting amino acid with the piperidine B protection to get in both cases the peptide resin protected. Then under a global D protection with a concentrated to TFA, we are able to get the fully deprotected peptide with a tritil, whereas we get a partial protected peptide as a 616 or protected with a esterbutyl. In both cases, we are performing the cyclization in buffer to get the crude peptide, which will be then concentrated on colon, as uh, uh, we need, I mean, to perform the cyclization in a very dilute condition in order to have the right folding and avoid the polymerization. After the purification on the reverse phase HPLC colon, doing the desalting and concentration step, we do the evaporation, the freeze drain to get the final, I mean, API. So then, I mean, we look, I mean, to do two additional route selection, having for both of them a ester butyl and a f on two cysteine and a four treaty group on the four other cysteine. So we started in the same manner on resin, doing the assembly to get the peptide resin containing the four groups. And we divided into uh, our product. The first one on resin, uh, the protection for the ester butyl, doing then the cyclization of the, um, uh, of the one for um, uh, connection into the resin and then performing the cleavage, and then the cyclization in liquid phase for the two, five, and the three, six uh, connectivity to get the crude peptide. Whereas here, when getting, I mean, the uh, partial uh, protected peptide after the concentration in TFA, we were able then to perform, I mean, the cyclization to, to get the crude. And in both cases, we have performed the same a downstream process to get the peptide API than the two other root selection. So then we have compared, I mean, the outcome of the uh, of those four um, uh, routes. So the first route, which was, which was I mean, initially uh, selected was, I mean, the route number four. The reason why is when we look, I mean, to the different purity and and, and, and yield, it seems to be, I mean, the best one. The crude purity was the highest one with a 61.7 compared to 56, uh, 50, sorry, 51.2. Then the cyclization yield, where we know that this is the most challenging steps, we were able to get a 40% compared to 22 and the 30. Then there was, I mean, the Opton API purity at the end of the purification, which was 99.6, quite, I mean, high compared to the two others, and the global DSP yield, which was 74. So the best, I mean, uh, uh, the best yield could be obtained by the root number uh, E4. 
Nevertheless, despite those good yield, uh, good yield and uh, a good purity, the best one, we have selected the root A1. And the reason why is as a manufacturer, other uh, important factor will be taken into account then only, I mean, the crude purity and the yield. We need, I mean, to see the performance on the shop floor. And getting, I mean, the root E4, we, after cyclization, we have a turbid solution, which was very difficult to perform the filtration, so taken several uh, hours, sometimes even days, whereas here it was a clear solution and we can even avoid the filtration. Moreover, when we look, I mean, to the safety, uh, that uh, crude was, do, do, do not have any smell, whereas that one was marodorous. Then, uh, when we look, I mean, to the global DSP yield, we are quite, I mean, uh, similar, but the cyclization yield was 25% uh, less than the route for, for. Despite that par parameter, we have taken, I mean, that route in order to be able to have a process uh, from a performance point of view. It was better to sacrifice the 25% than having, I mean, all those difficulties of uh, performing the downstream process as we get, I mean, some difficult back pressure on the colon for the root E4. Other type, I mean, of transformation that could also increase the half-life will be the dent remerization. So one example that we have at polypeptide synthesized is that uh, typical branch peptide with a four uh, peptide chain, identical one. So it's um, a, a total uh, peptide of 49 residue that has been produced at a scale of one kilo GMP in phase one. And our customer has shared that it is much more stable than having, I mean, the uh, single, I mean, peptide uh, chain. Another complicated, I mean, peptide, after getting the dendrimerization, we can even uh, increase the stability by addition of the N-terminal modification with a glycosylation. So this is the case of this branch peptide, so the same sequence for the peptide. Uh, starting, I mean, from the first amino acid, we do, I mean, the uh, dendrimerization through the lysine, and then, I mean, the addition of the sugar. So it contains in total 76 residue. So we can we have applied peptide chemistry, but also sugar chemistry at a 15 grams DMP scale. And the most challenging part was to ensure that the uh, racemization on the anomeric uh, carbon of the first sugar was not, I mean, affected. So that was more analytical challenge than the real, I mean, uh, 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 chemistry, I mean, associated. Another type of, um, uh, of transformation is a peptide that will contain a cyclization, so a disulfid bridge, small molecule to get the functionalized linker, and then the pegylation uh, through a PEG 40 kilodalton. So that concerns the PEGI nesatide that we already, I mean, have uh, talked about before, which include the PEG residue of two times 20 kilodalton. It's uh, in total 43 residue involving peptide and small molecule chemistry that we were, I mean, producing at a scale of two kilo uh, GMP phase three, even commercial, but unfortunately in 2012, it was withdrawn from the, from the market. Another type uh, of uh, complexity in chemistry is a cyclized clique peptide, which is a 16 mer peptide. So that peptide will be, in fact, produced starting from the CTC resin, doing the assembly by SPPS with a classical FMOC protecting amino acid, but also some specific amino acid, uh, piperidine deprotection, and in which we will introduce the pegylated linker in solid phase as well as we will perform the click chemistry with a copper two solution on resin as well. We will get then the peptide resin, which will be uh, submitted to a global deprotection with a concentrated TFA to get the crude click peptide. Then the last transformation will be uh, the thioether, so the nucleophile substitution performed in liquid phase by cyclization to get the crude cyclic click peptide that will be then purified in two steps, desalting to get the right counterlinon, concentration, isolation to get, I mean, the peptide API. <coughs> so it has been, I mean, produced at a scale of 120 grams uh, as a toxicological batch. 
Then in 20, uh, 20, 2021, we have seen an increase of the sophisticated peptide and on the peptide length as well. So we have, I mean, some chemical modification added, but the peptide length is much more uh, bigger than what we use. I mean, to have, I will say, five or 10 years ago. We have, I mean, built a dendrimer which contain more than 100 mer, so it's more close, I mean, to a protein than a real peptide, involving some chemistry like the click chemistry with a copper two in liquid phase. Uh, it has been, I mean, synthesized at a scale of two grams with an HPLC purity of 92%. So you can see here the complexity of the peptide with a free uh, entity, so a peptide chain, a long one. Then a second one, which will be a core lysine containing the alcine, and then a peptide two with a lysine uh, azide in order to ensure later on the click chemistry and uh, be able, I mean, to generate uh, the cycle. So the way that we have, I mean, proceeded is simply uh, starting from the assembly by SPPS for three of them. We do the full, I mean, elongation. We did the cleavage from the resin and the side chain deprotection. And then for that specific core lysine alcine, there was some chemical transformation in liquid phase in order to generate the crude uh, peptide. So starting from the crude peptide, we perform the dissolution and the HPLC uh, purification to get the pure peptide in solution. In order, and, and we have isolated those peptide by freeze drying. So all those uh, entities have been isolated in order to start in liquid phase the transformation. So the first one was the, the coupling to the conjugation between the peptide one and the core lysine containing the alcine. Then we uh, performed the click chemistry by adding the lysine uh, and free peptide two to get the crude API in solution, which have, have been submitted to a purification and then uh, a freeze drying. So you can see the number, I mean, of steps and, uh, related to the downstream part, and the length, I mean, of those peptides are quite long as we reach, I mean, a peptide of more than 100 mer at the end. Another type of uh, transformation will be uh, the bicycle, so it concerns, I mean, a 30 mer peptide. Uh, in which, I mean, we are starting from the resin, assembly by SPPS with a smoke protecting amino acid and the piperidine deprotection to get a peptide resin, then a global deprotection concentrated TFA to get the crude peptide. Then we start, I mean, the cyclization, so using the tribromomethyl benzene in, uh, in liquid phase and to get the crude cyclized peptide. After a purification on reverse phase in two steps, the salting concentration and the freeze drying by isolation, we are able to get the peptide 30 mer, so on the free cysteine cyclization. We uh, have performed, I mean, batches of 100 grams, 300 grams with an increase of the final purity of 98.6. And the most challenging part was, I mean, the final cyclization where we had to perform in a very diluted condition and the byproduct associated. We had, I mean, here to dedicate some, some vessel, specific vessel uh, to, I mean, the product in order uh, to, to ensure, I mean, no question related to potential cross-contamination. Another one example, which is, I mean, one of the longest uh, complex peptide that we have synthesized internally. It's a 100, more than 130 uh, residue obtained by uh, specific chemistry. So a ligation, but not the classical one. And uh, the deprotection is performed by photochemistry. So we had uh, to generate four fragments between 30 and 40 amino acids. After each of those fragments, purification has taken place, so it means SPPS synthesis for each of one, then a purification by uh, HPLC, then start the specific ligation and to reach to a, an around 70 amino acid, then a 60 amino acid with again some purification, and um, a final ligation and purification, which make in total seven purification steps. It has been performed at a scale of 1.8 grams uh, of linear protein with a purity of 97.7. Other uh, peptide, as an example, which have been already produced at an industrial scale. So you can see, I mean, scale between four kilo and uh, around 10 kilo. 
So the first peptide contains free modification, acetylation, lactam coupling, and pegylation that we are producing between 6.3 kilo and 7.5 kilo under validation. Another one with one mo uh, modification is a thioether cyclization at a scale of 6 kilo, uh, also undergoing uh, uh, a validation program. Uh, the third one uh, has, I mean, uh, a sequence only composed by D amino acid at a scale of 10 kilo. Uh, it's a 5 mer uh, peptide which is uh, obtained by uh, at the end by a crystallization. So it's it's really a green peptide, I will say, in a way that we are using uh, a telescoping uh, processes in order to generate the final peptide, so to reduce uh, all the waste associated, and moreover, this is a, a green solvent which are used to produce, I mean, such type of peptide at a scale of 10 kilo. Then the last one with a D-amino acid, a formulation for further transformation at a scale of 4.25 kilo. So just as a summary, uh, peptide have a short half-life in the body due to the enzyme degradation. Uh, thanks, I mean, to the chemical modification, which are really the key leverage to extend the half-life and lead to uh, an evolving structural complexity of peptide, but which will ensure the best stability and the half-life. So over the past five years, we have seen an increase uh, of the, the complexity of those peptide, uh, allowing, I mean, to uh, master all those type, I mean, of, uh, of chemistry in the different uh, a peptide, but also uh, in industrialization. Having, I mean, this scale-up perform with all the challenges that uh, can be seen, as I mean, at small scale, sometimes we do not face anything, and when we start, I mean, at the one kilo scale, some side uh, impurity are generated. So to end my presentation, I would like, I mean, to thank, I mean, the, uh, the polypeptide, uh, teams that has been worked on uh, those different, I mean, challenges in the characterization, but also in the chemistry associated, also the production teams for uh, the execution of those different batches, and also the project management with help uh, with our customer uh, to set the best roadmap in order to uh, fulfill the expectation of the customer. And I would like also to thank you for your very kind uh, attention. Thank you.